Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's look at how to make your own brush tips and then export them as a bundle in case you want to share them or do lots with them. Let's see how to do that. All right, so hopping into Krita here, and this is the latest version available presently, at least if, unless you're going to go to beta. I'm on 5.2.2, and I'm just going to start with a brand new image in HD dimension. Uh, 300 maybe overkill, but that's about the standard resolution I do just to make sure I can scale as I need to just in case you want to try the same thing. So I'm going to start by creating a blank canvas and I'm going to take away the background. I'm going to actually construct the tip that I'm going to be painting with, <laughs> which is a little mind bending, but stay with me. All right. So first thing is I'm going to make the existing tip pretty big and I'm going to just make a simple pattern here like that. All right. Maybe one more. That'll be my new brush tip. Okay, so from this point, we have to export it as something meaningful. So I'm going to go to File and Export. And I'm going to put this out as a PNG. That's just fine. And give it a name that's meaningful, just so you can find it again. <laughs> and then the next step from here is you want to find a brush that's already been built using the, the pixel engine. That's the easiest way to get through this. I know this one was because I've worked with this one before. So I'm just going to start with that one as a base and then come up here and click this button, the edit brush settings. And you can start by going into the brush tip and importing what you just created. I did the curve tip. That's what I'm starting with. And this may look familiar if you're into GIMP, uh, there's a not too different process about making your own brush tips, but this is Krita's process for that. Uh, you do have to kind of dig through a little bit to find where it has ended up. And I think the way this is organized is by alphabetic, alphabetical. So yeah, under the C's, I finally find mine. <laughs> and I'm gonna select that one first. And at this stage, I'm going to save it as a new brush preset. That's important because I do not want to overwrite. I don't want to wipe out this one. It's just a base. So I'm going to save it as a new one. I'm going to call it thick, or actually I'm going to call it curved tip uh, two. Why not? And you could change this thumbnail. This is what's going to appear over on the right. Um, you can borrow what's already there, or you can load from the icon library. That might make sense uh, just to give it a little bit of distinguishing look. You can also change the hue a little bit. So again, it has that completely unique look, and it's easier for you to find in your library of things. Let's save that. You can see it over here already. Now what you would want to do is kind of go through and change any of the settings that are relevant to this particular brush. Um, some of the common things to look for, all right, and, and this is where it helps trying to find something that's similar if you can pre-build from that. Um, but often you'll want to look for things like uh, randomization uh, just to kind of make sure it's varied a little bit, not always, but that can be a helpful thing. If I were to click on the size, we can see rotation and rotation is going to add a little bit of change to how the brush is oriented as you go. That could be one way to make your brush strokes unique, although not always. You may just want to depend on how it's currently oriented. So I'm going to flip that on just so you can see. And there's a ton of different settings here. Uh, scatter is, the, again, more ran randomization. Uh, you'll want to play with these because there's just too many options to really go through and meaningfully describe all in one video. There's a lot. Um, some of it is just going to be seeing what it does and then coming back in with the same editor and changing it. And that's actually an important point because as you make changes, you'll want to make sure you're using the one you've created because when you go to save it at this point, yeah, what you want to do is overwrite it. OK, that's kind of your update save button. You don't want to save a new one. You want to overwrite the one you have. And once you're happy and you've arrived at something, let's go test that out. Start up a new image. Again, I'm going to go with the HD dimensions. And we can already see how it's borrowing from that new tip that I've created. And this gets a little more interesting as I try to use it with a, a device that supports pressure. And that's like a digital pen, uh, which I love my digital pen. Uh, 
I would encourage you to pick one up if you can because you can throw in that pressure sensitivity and give it a new texture as you compress or feather it along and it really gives you a lot of versatility for how you design these tips. You can also see how the rotation is playing where as I rotate around or move it will change the orientation of the brush which gives it that just more of a unique look as I go through. So that was pretty simple to make a brush tip. Now, what if you wanted to make that and bundle it and be able to share that? Or really, you could even sell it if you wanted to in the Krita store. Um, but the first part is making a bundle because that's how you make it portable is you would go into the settings, manage resources, and then you want to create a bundle. Now, this part is not the best, but this is what it is, is you have to remember what it is that you named <laughs> your brush tip. So you'd have to select that and move it to the right. And you can do multiple ones that you've made. Uh, you can fill in the information that's relevant. That's always good just so it, you can give yourself credit. If you have a website for your portfolio, you can bake that into your contact email, all that stuff. The icon is nice too, because that's representative of what you're using. Um, if I were to go back into what I had set up as the brush. This is another good reason why you can make it uh, a PNG is I can just borrow what I've made and that now becomes the, the icon for this bundle. So it's a little bit more intuitive as to what the bundle is. Sometimes the bundle will be a, a, a collection of variants. So you'd want to pick one that best represents that collection. Also tagging it is useful uh, because that can help with sorting within the Krita uh, space. So that would be something that I would look in as well. I didn't tag it at all through this process because that's just kind of extra fluff and that's something you can explore. So you want to give it a name and I'm just going to stick with my theme here, Curve Tips, and then save it. And that has now exported. Now you do want to pay special attention as well to the save too because that's, that's where it's going to dump it to. And then if I were to go pull that up, you can now see that I have this Curved Tips <laughs> bundle. And that is now portable where if I wanted to either email this file or post it and share it somewhere or put it into the Krita store, um, I could now do that. And if I were the person who was either downloading this or buying it or doing any of those things, uh, what I would do is in my Krita, I would go again to settings, manage resources, import resources, and then wherever I downloaded it to, it's going to be unique to wherever you put that. But in my case, this is where it is. <laughs> and then you would just click on your bundle and click open. And you would see that. You would see those same brushes uh, according to whatever icons you picked uh, drop into your brush presets. And now I mentioned tags. That's where these kinds of things become useful, where you can help to sort the kind of brush that it is because sometimes it just makes it less intimidating to filter uh, down to a certain brush set. So tagging can be useful, but it's not essential necessarily. All right, so that really is the process of how you can home bake your own custom brush tips uh, for Krita and then also make them portable. If this was useful to you, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe and ask a question, leave a comment so we can grow together and explore new ideas and concepts. I'd be happy to point to you in the right direction if I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.